Hi everyone, it's La Luca and welcome to my channel, La Luca. Guess who did some time traveling? This is so not fake and if you think it's fake, go check yourself. So the first topic we are talking about is where Teke Wanua and she was a great Bugis queen. Where Teke Wanua means she who carries the land and I'm not sure if I've shared this already but Back in the day, Bugis people used to used to put where in front of a female name, la in front of a male's name, and then e is unisex, so it could be for both male and female. In historic texts, apparently she broke the broad and split the long. I have no idea what that means, but I had to put that in because it sounds so cool. So where Tekewanua is the fourth recorded ruler of West. Sopeng. So Sopeng Riaja and Riaja means west in a Bugis dialect. She was the ruler around the middle of the 15th century and she ruled at Supa. Her parents were Labang and Weti Manratu. <laughs> Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> so they found really well preserved pre Islamic burial jars around 18 kilometers north of Sopeng and they actually think that one of the jars actually contains the ashes of where Tekewanua. Before the Bugis people became Muslim, apparently they used to practice cremation and then put the ashes into burial jars. Anyways, where Tekewanua is kind of considered as a really great queen. She apparently expanded agriculture in the Sopeng region. So she invited people from all over, from Sidenreng, Nepo, Mario Rawa. <laughs> After all my R's, don't know, I don't know. Mario Mario Rawa. Okay, that sounds too ra ra. Well, anyways, yeah, she invited people from those places, and then she married the the. Temapeo or Temapeo at a place called Leorung. Leorung. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Boogie's genetics, but not a Boogie's throat. Where Tekanua had seven children. So, yeah, that's a really brief overview about where Tekewanua and I am inspired by Boogie's Queens. It's actually interesting because we know so much about European royalty but we don't know as much about Southeast Asian royalty, especially this far in the past. So it's amazing that I actually stumbled upon this information. Okay, the second topic we're talking about is Villa Juliana. So Villa Juliana is a colonial Dutch building in Watan Sopeng, in the Sopeng Regency. When I first saw pictures of this building, I was like, oh, this must be just a fake modern castle they decided to build. But actually, it's authentic and old and it looks pretty cute. So it's 16 meters tall. It's a two story building and it's actually a unique blend of different styles. It was built around 1906 under the administration of Governor C.A. Cruson. It was kind of a retreat for guests visiting Sopeng and it also became the official residence of the controller of Sopeng. It's on the top of Boto Hill and what's really unique about it is that it's located higher than the Statu Sopeng Palace or the indigenous rulers palace. And that is to show that the Dutch rule was more higher than the native rule. It's actually located in a really good spot. It's got beautiful mountain views. And also, if there's any community uprisings or anything happening, you've got a good view of that. Apparently it has seven rooms on each level and there's terraces at the front and back. And I actually really want to visit this place. Maybe I get to visit it later on this year. 
before I was talking about how it had lots of different styles so it kind of evokes the memories of medieval churches back in the Netherlands and it has some Tudor and medieval revival styles such as the half timbered look it has Romanesque arches and Victorian Gothic influences sounds pretty cool well yeah anyways I hope you learned more about that building and maybe I can visit in the future and learn more about it. Now I'm going to tell you this really cool story about these Bugis brother and sister who are rulers of different Bugis countries. So this is recorded in the Chronicle of Sidenreng and it's actually based on the oral tradition so it was based in people way before they started recording and writing down the history so even though they think that yeah they are based on real historical characters it's you've got to you've got to take it with a grain of salt so it may be true maybe not some parts may be true some parts maybe not so in Sedenring's oral history they believe that their forefathers came from Tanatoraja. So the Arung of Sidenreng and the Arung of Rapang, so the Arung is kind of like the the ruler, were brother and sister. And they actually made an agreement with each other. They said, what dies in the morning in Rapang dies in the afternoon in Sidenreng. So just give me a heads up. This might have happened or this might not have, but it's just an interesting story anyway. Not long after the agreement was made, the royal palace at Sidenreng was burnt to the ground. When the Arung of Rapang found out from the messenger from Sidenreng, she asked, what did the ruler of Sidenreng manage to save? And then the message, messenger said, just himself, his wives and children, and one of his cats. I'm so glad that they saved a cat. But sorry to hear about the other cats, if there were other cats. So that very morning, the Arung of Rabbang, so the sister, and her household members left the palace, and they set fire to their palace because of the agreement they made. Remember they said, what dies in the morning in Rabbang, dies in the afternoon in Sidenreng and vice versa. I admire them for sticking to their promise, but maybe that's a little bit too far. A perfectly good palace got burned to the ground. Please remember to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, but I don't really use that that much at the moment. And... I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.